tell you then because I can guarantee you before he barked he told you 20 other ways most likely because there are horses that are exceedingly smart but what if it was the saddle fit or the bit or the hooves or the riding or the energy or the turnout or the mate what was the cause one there's never no reason there's always a reason we have to identify it but two we're also looking at um if if we didn't catch that whisper they have to raise that bar they cannot tell us about pain any other clearer way than by going higher and higher on that bar and it could be seconds one two three seconds or it could be weeks by the time they've raised the bar and this comes still back to the energy healing to go and say you know what we could find different chakras that are blocked i got a great um i think i sent it to you great chakra banner that we created and that, that again 20 odd years of work coming together there but if you look at it the closed chakras so let's focus in on one here the sacral chakra so it's chakra number two so i have to think backwards because i start the chakra clearings on the head going back out of respect and safety although chakra number one's the root it wouldn't be safe to start there you don't want to put your hands on a butt <laughs> you want to really start on the head so chakra number two is the orange one the sacral one and it relates to personal power as well as relationships and paula if you think of resources you'll see a divot just there just by the back a racehorse's back will come down there will be a tad of a divot and we could say that's confirmation which it's not the thoroughbred it's the relationship and bless them they never had that deep relationship with anybody they never had the one person they're commodity yeah. and so that piece back there actually divides their grounding from the spiritual aspect there's a there's a break there so putting hands on there can help them reconnect and align but it also goes back to say i feel for you just here what comes with that you'd start looking at behavioral issues i shut down not wanting to be caught sidestepping off the mountain block anything that says hey i'm not connected and so with it not only are high percentage of animals or horses in pain but we're looking at emotional mental physical blockages which could manifest in disease and pain that we could help them move through. We're not in a position to move all of our issues through. They're not in a position to move all of theirs through without the support, either chiropractic massage, energy healing. All of it comes back to that. And, you know, there might be a lot of people out there thinking, well, boy, I'm no energy healer. You know, I, I don't know anything about, about Reiki or chakras or any, any of this. So how do you encourage people? Obviously your program, the 101 ways is, is really helpful because it's going to help open doors. But what are, what are some ways that people can start exploring this a bit further? There's so many ways. And the first is not to deny it, to realize that you don't have to be attuned or seek a modality. You have it inside. And the way you connect, I, I did the hands on the heart. And the truth is that what you're doing is you're going into a place of love. That's what you're doing. And the place of love, wherever you find it. I've had clients that are Christians, Christianity, fundamental Christians, not normally a lot of fundamentals because of belief patterns, but at the same time, it doesn't matter of the religion, generally speaking. But if somebody's not religious, they struggle at first to go, they don't connect with spirit, the being creator. Then you've got to figure out where you do connect with love. So for everybody, you're looking at, do you connect with spirit? Do you connect with your God, your creator? Does it come from within? Does it come from your ancestors? So when you put your hands on your heart, it's about connecting to love. And then you put your hands on your heart, you put your hands on your horse. And with that, it's the energy that's flowing and the energy of love, one of unconditional love. You can, of course, have mantras of returning the individual back to perfection or seeing the light connect within the body, sending the love inside these are all ways to help and that alone is enough you know I, I can't remember exactly all the segments that i sent through for you guys but there's a great one and hopefully we did it which was the heart to heart connection and i coined it two ways one was heart to heart because it's our heart 
to their heart behind the shoulder. But it's also a heart, this heart chakra to this heart chakra. So behind the withers and in between the two um, pointer shoulders. And that heart to heart connection is an incredible way to begin energy healing. It changes behavior, moods, outlooks, physical, everything. You could have that miracle with that one heart to heart and you put your hands there. Now here's a big key to it. We put the hand at the bottom of the withers. That one's a, a given and quite easy because you come in on the, the left side, the near side. This hand at first would go on the brachial chakra and the brachial chakra is the scapula. And it's a key chakra and it's a really cool chakra because it's non-invasive. So you have one hand here, one hand here and you run energy. And the reason you run energy is so that they begin to feel your energy. They get comfy with it, their heart opens, you lull them into safety, their eye shot, you see the Reiki registers. And then this hand asks permission to go to the front. And it asks, because by the time you do heart to heart, you're opening the heart. And if that individual is guarded, they might say, hold on, you know, I'm not quite ready. I can't quite let go. Or I don't know you we need to get to know each other more or you no, know, don't need that opening. So there could be a no. So the way you move the hand at the speed. So, it's, so what it is, and it's not just move or fast, it's moving at a speed where that horse could shoot you look to say, please don't, or don't do that. They might say, please, and they might say, don't. And so then you stop and go, okay, I won't do that. I'll wait a little longer, see if you're in a better place to ask you again. And I found if you ask two, three times, that's enough. Because then they get really obnoxious or they get pissed off that they've said no three times and they might bite. But you're, you're not trying to force it. You're trying to say, run the energy. If it feels good to you, I'll move my hand. And the reason it's a great place to go there because it's the heart. And the heart gets guarded. And over time, depending on what's happened to them, they'll have a greater heart wall and a greater guardedness to them. And we're saying, you know what? Let's see if we can break down that wall so that you can allow love to come back in. And with that, they no longer live in a place of fear, but they come to a place of love. And that changes demeanors and outlooks and perspectives. And it's really neat. Some of the horses that have been glazed where they look like that a little, suddenly you'll see a spark or a horse that's been really lame might have a burst of energy horses pinning their ears at humans might even stop and instead they're smiling so you have all these these instant gratifications and these instant results through that energy healing i've had a mule when i first moved to colorado couldn't be caught did one love lessons changed her she could be caught from that day onwards wow. so there's there's really cool things that you don't even have to do horsemanship. You see, on this horsemanship channel, somebody might say, well, the mule doesn't want to be caught. Let's move his feet or, you know, let's use food as reward. Do love lessons. Maybe they've been crying out to connect and they've never had that one human and that would change everything. You don't need to do horsemanship because you're sharing space and sharing energy instead. That's so neat. It's really bringing it back to where the horse is actually coming from and yeah. taking from human existence world and, and going to the horse and seeing them for what they really are as an energetic being. And that's actually what we are too. But we, yeah. like we kind of talked about in the beginning, we yeah. lose it, which is really sad, but the, it, it allows us to then, the, 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 we, we heal the horse and find that energy, but then the horse helps heal us and we find our own energy. Tell us a little bit about the, the chakras and how when we're riding, I thought this was so intriguing, but all of our chakras are lined up over their heart chakra. Tell, tell us a little bit about that and how that influences. You know, it comes back to, I think, to what you said, and I think you actually said it best because you mentioned the congruency and the authenticity. And you said, how can a horse understand or take us for who we are when we and misaligned and confusing and that's exactly it you're sat right there where in effect the first chakra the grounding chakra would also be one of letting go and releasing what no longer serves you 
and we're sat on that one chakra to go, let me release everything, right? And so here it is, they're getting every single energetic motion coming to them, with them, and you're connecting, you're riding, there's the friction, you're connecting, and they're feeling the truth. And so therefore, there's a degree of mindfulness that we have to have. They're going to feel tension. So when somebody says, oh, no, I'm not tense. So why are you gripping with your knees then? You know, what piece didn't you realize about yourself? Or are you holding really tight? And you say, you're trying to be in control. No, I'm basically not. Well, why is your elbow locked then? And your hands are white knuckled. You're in control, you know? And so they are feeling all of that on horseback. And they're not given enough credit for it either, for the fact that um, nobody taught me. I've been riding since I was 10 and been doing the professional piece for over probably 30 years now. And nobody taught me the power of the mind. Nobody did that. Now, there are some incredible people out there that are writing books on it now too. And, but it will be either written in a scientific way, but not necessarily in an esoteric way either. And there's also a balance there to be had to realize your energy, your intention will come through upon approach. Your energy fields are coming together. The horse's energy field is maybe 10, 15 times larger than ours. So it could be the same size as a soccer pitch, you know? Um, so as we walk into that, they've felt your true intention. And they know what you're about. They know who you are. They know what you're thinking. So it doesn't even take you to get on their horse's back for them to know what you're going through in that day. And we are used to hiding behind the mask. And not everybody's intuitive enough or even cares nowadays that they're looking into another person's eyes to go, are you okay? Just hide. You know, maybe we ignore their eyes or their smile, but everybody can wear the emotion behind those eyes. And it's a matter of whether or not we wish to look deeper, but the horse is already looking deeper. So they, they are already there. We don't have to sit on the back. And I find it so fascinating on every level. We're going into horsemanship a little bit here. The horse has to ignore it all and then they get into trouble. So when you're really thinking, I wish you wouldn't canter, I'm shit scared, or so the bleep scared. Um, and then when he doesn't, I saw this on RFT TV, RFD TV at one point, where the rider was so imbalanced and concerned that the instructor was saying, kicking, kipping him, don't let him get away with it. What the hell? You're imbalanced and your mind is saying, I'm not ready to do this. The horse is feeling the imbalance in your mind, but getting in trouble for listening to what you're saying. That's a challenge for me. And it's harder, you know, the more you're awakened, the more you see things and you see through their eyes, it doesn't necessarily get easier. Because no. you realize that they're, they're having to ignore what your eyes are saying, what you're saying with your thoughts, what you're saying through your movements. So you can really break it down to what are the eyes saying? What are your movements saying? What's your intention saying? Your energy saying? What are your thoughts saying? So if you want, there's five places that these horses are picking up authenticity, congruency, alignment, communication. They're told to ignore all five. And if they don't, they get pulled in the mouth, kicked, you know, harshly beaten to the point because they're reading the human and they're masters at it. And I guess all of this comes back to the fact that, yes, we can look at energy healing, which was the whole point of what I submitted, but it actually goes way beyond that into the energetic connection. Yeah, that's it's 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 really too bad and it's so commonplace and it, it it is so sad because they are such amazingly intuitive soulful energetic beings and and to to snuff that flame out and and you do you see it in checked out horse after checked out horse after checked out horse and they all express it differently you know some of them express it outwardly many go within 
And it's the ones that go within that are often deemed, you know, wonderful, bomb proof, this, that, and the other. And so then people start to think that these are the actual things that we're going for and striving for. And all it is, is this horse that's spirit has just been knocked down to the point that they're just complacent to absolutely everything. And it's sad because how much could that horse offer if we allowed the horse to be what God intended it to be? Yeah. And each horse is, is, you know, has a different intention for their, their life. But unfortunately we, yeah, we just throw our, our crap on top and, and, uh, yeah. And we define a good horse, like you said. We're defining the good horse as being a compliant being as a whole. But then we do that to ourselves. So yeah. it's that thing of we're picking it up in every direction and we look at you know, non conforming to be bad if you don't fit into that category. And so, therefore, this reawakens. And not everybody wants a reawakened horse, they, <laughs> they want the motorbike and they want the I just want the trail. Okay. All right, but what does your horse want? Well, I never knew what motivated him. What do you want? And I want motivates him. Is he lazy? Is he in pain? I mean, everybody will, or people will say he's lazy, but there's no such thing as a lazy horse. He lacked motivation or he's in pain. So let's find what motivates him. If you're trying to put him in the arena and he's not responding, how many kids don't want to be in the classroom? Are they lazy? No, we just wouldn't motivate them. So it's about redefining how we see the horses and um, yeah, redefining it through the glasses that we have on. <laughs> giving back. For me, it's about giving back to say they've been so resilient over the years. They're so patient and they're waiting for that moment for us to truly talk with them, not at them, but with them, talk with them. Uh-huh. Goes both ways. It's a two-way conversation. <laughs> but that's excellent. I, I think um I don't know. I think it's I think it's something that as as you go through and I think a lot of people find this, it, you go through this path with horses and it it starts to evolve to a place where it gets more and more and more to that space of being very energetic and very um, spiritual and connected and and it's I think people are in all different stages of this journey and and you see that I'm sure as you as you travel around but as as it starts evolving it starts to become harder to find people that are teaching what you're teaching because there's not a lot of you out there and especially the fact that you're able to incorporate both the horsemanship and bring that in as well as what some people might say, woo woo stuff, <laughs> you know, we are able to take that whole picture and have an understanding of the whole picture so that you can help people on this, on this journey as they're going from the horsemanship level and then realizing, boy, there's more. And then another door opens and there's more. And you know, all of a sudden it's like, wow, there's this whole world that you never could have imagined was even out there. How, how do people find out more about your clinics and your online programs that you have and that sort of thing where would they where would they be able to find you i can say through you but um, <laughs> it's reach out to horses and the, in the websites depending on when they click on to this is either going to be archaic or brand new but we've been hoping to create a website we, we remain so busy and so therefore i i call it a little archaic but that's one way to do it i do have a ton of youtube videos out there and it ranges from the energy and animal communication of all kinds through to the horsemanship so i find that youtube is a great resource and for me personally um i have been teaching for two decades and we have clinics all over the world from europe to united states etc and and this year alone, I was fortunate to go to Costa Rica and Mexico and a number of other places. So it's expansive. And it's always been my mission to take the methods around the world, to take them to third world countries. Not everybody can afford to come to us. And so the travel is a big part of it. And I encourage people to either look online, like you said. I'm fortunate we created an animal communication mentorship program. So we have different tiers for that Paula one's a home study and so people can look at purchasing 200 ish a 
between 150 and 200 hours worth of information in home study. Okay. But they can also look at webinar with home study or the third tier is coming to the ranch and having 12 12 days over one year period as well as at the home study. So animal communication is available for people to learn more. The Reiki, I tend to teach that two, three times a year. And I love to, I call it bookend my year. And that means I start the year with Reiki. I end the year with Reiki. And it really takes you off the carousel and reminds you why we're truly here. And it helps people align to what their life's purpose is. And so I do teach the Reiki. I've never dropped that despite how busy I've been. It's a great pleasure to be able to pass that art along. And we have a two day energy healing for horses with that as well. So people can look at it to say they want to go to the Bitterroot in Wyoming, they want to go to Costa Rica or to wherever I am currently in Colorado. People can choose it. Therefore, it's very eclectic to go to us for a certification in natural horsemanship all the way through to a trainer or instructor level. I'm certainly not a quick fix person. And that would mean you cannot learn my horsemanship. You can have fun with the 101 things. And we've got about five years worth of information that's going to get launched in different categories from problem solving and so on. But also I'm a firm believer that if you're looking for a certification, like a trainer's degree level, you've got to come to the place directly and my courses are unique there too i didn't want to reinvent the wheel so i didn't create courses that you can find everywhere and so thus i have full gentling and mustang gentling and problem solving and slightly different cult starting and so all of these together allow people to find their passion improve on the horse's lifestyle bring everything together to say I, I want to be the next generation of horsemen. And that's what I feel we are with Reach Out to Horses. That's great. And what a gift to horses to leave that legacy behind of knowledgeable people that, that have learned the ways. And yeah, that's fantastic. Well, you should come sometime. I know. <laughs> we really should. Hey. You should look and see which one speaks to you. You're going to have so much opportunity to, to delve into different things now. So. Yeah. No, that's neat. I would definitely be, be interested in that sort of thing and, and furthering, furthering, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've never done any energy healing work per se, um, but I definitely I feel it in my life everywhere. And so. I'm surprised you haven't because I, I feel like even if you feel it in your life, there's something that you might harness or confirmation that you might benefit from um, and guidance that could put you in, in the direction that I think you should be on because there's, okay. there's nothing stopping you if it's part of who you are. And I think it would be grand to explore it a little bit more. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, that then. See, and sometimes you need little pushes like that, don't you, to <laughs> get you going. So I will, I will definitely explore some of that with you, Anna. And I, I really appreciate you being here today. And I would like to also thank everybody for joining in with us. And make sure you go visit Reach Out to Horses and, and check out what Anna has to offer. Maybe her new site is going to be up and running. Maybe not. But either way, I'm sure you've got a lot of information. I think more for you. So on your new one, we're submitting more information and we've been filming. And this is, this is actually one of the reasons I mentioned the 101 things because we're submitting to you pieces from the 101 things. So people that have been listening to you sending it, that would be my next submission for your next program would be to figure out if we want to continue on the um, energy healing vein and pull some pieces from that. Or if we're looking at animal communication, pull some pieces from that. But that would be your first step on the ladder when people are joining your piece to then say actually I like this and come on board with the 101 things to do it would be a segue right great so yes so so for those of you attending the fair make sure you check out her presentations and and if you have uh, purchased the last fair you can see the the presentations that have the the reiki and the energy work and have some information on the ch chakras and and all of that so so yes, so check it out. And yes. 
And we, we do, I, I could go on and on. We, we have the Chakra Banner, we have pendulums, we have 14 handmade, designed in the United States, animal totem pendulums. And so there's the Reiki DVD, there's the Chakra Banner, there's the totems, there's animal communication DVDs. There's really a whole eclectic piece that people could start that career or start to really look at their passion in greater detail, which is really neat too. You are one-stop location, Paula. That's All right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's my pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you for inviting me on the interview. And I wish you all the best with your vision because it's a beautiful vision. And um, you've got some wonderful people that are joining you on the webinars too. So it'd be lovely to see the finished piece. Yes. Well, you're welcome. And thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.